Hey guys, today I want to take you into the laboratory with me to show you all of the really cool things that I currently have growing. Before we go, I got a surprise this morning. If you watched my last cactus and succulent video, then you might already know what it is. Ta-da! It's a pseudolithos. This one's a little bigger. They feel so weird. I feel like I'm holding a reptile or something right now. Supposedly, they smell really bad, so smell test. Yeah, that smells like This is so cute. I'll read that later. The instructions don't really matter because I am going to put these plants into tissue culture today. Apparently these are really hard to propagate in tissue culture from what I've read. I messaged Cacti Fanatici, who's another plant tissue culture influencer. Did I just invent a new job? He does a lot of work with cacti and putting them in vitro. So I asked him if he had ever tried to TC a pseudolithos. And he replied that he has them ongoing right now and he just inducted two weeks ago. So I was like, oh, perfect. I'll just copy what you did. So I asked him when you established them, did you cut the pseudolithos into multiple pieces or did you just use the entire plant as your explant to which he replied that he just used seeds, which is probably a way smarter way to do this. <laughs> but I'm gonna try to put an entire pseudolithos into tissue culture and I will show you the process after I give you a little laboratory tour. While we're at the lab today, I also think I'm going to do some tissue culture on my Monstera aureas. I have a new protocol that I wanna try out and I just have a bunch of the plants sitting around that I'm not really doing anything with. Let me show you. Okay, basically we need their nodes for tissue culture. So that is what I'm gonna do right now. I have our goodie bags to bring into the office with us. Before we go, I just wanted to let you know that I have merch available. It is a really awesome design of a skeleton doing tissue culture. I love how it came out. And if you wanna support my channel, that is a great way to do so. Also, in case you didn't know, there is a Plants in Jars Discord server. So if you need help or you're just interested in the subject in general, head over to the Discord server. All right, finally, we are going to the laboratory. <laughs> Welcome to the part of the video where I show you my laboratory organisms. My favorite thing that I have growing in the laboratory is my corpse saver samples from last year. As you can see, they have some freaky tendrils, which is really bizarre. For a while, I had put this plant into temporary immersion using the biocouplers, and that's when it grew the weird tendrils that you see today. I did not mean to spin it around that fast. <laughs> and now it's back on semi-solid media and starting to make these strange little white shoots. I don't think this will ever turn itself into anything resembling an actual corpse flower, but I am just going to continue subculturing it until it eventually just gives up. My corpse flower did enter into its third leaf cycle this year, so it should bloom sometime in the next seven years, hopefully. But since it's actively growing right now, about two weeks ago, I was able to replicate the experiment from last year and actually put, I, I would say like 50 or so explants into tissue culture. The media that I used this time around contains 1.5 milligrams per liter of TDZ, and I wanna say 0.5 milligrams per liter of NAA. I also used that same exact media for my Anthurium crystallonium. If I can successfully generate new Anthurium plantlets through callus culture, then I definitely want to start working with some more expensive Anthurium varieties. Anyways, the Colorado constellations are doing just okay. There's a lot of condensation in here, so I'll post some better pics. I only got one shoot from each of the nodes, and although it's kind of successful because you don't get any contamination, 
In my mind, it's ultimately a fail if you do tissue culture and then you only get one plant resulting, especially because I had to use an entire node. And at that point, it would have been easier to just propagate these the old fashioned way by sticking you know, a node into some dirt and just letting it grow. So instead of subculturing them into the same media, which I think contained one or two milligrams per liter of BAP, I made a new media that contains 7.5 milligrams per liter of BAP, which if this is not your first rodeo, sounds insane. The background on that decision is because two or three weeks ago, I went to meet with the University of Florida's ornamental tissue culture faculty. And they told me that they had recently finished a study on the Monstera Thai constellation and found that 7.5 milligrams per liter resulted in the best rate of multiplication for them. I will link their study below in case you are interested, but I'll also be talking about it a lot in my next video, which is a tour of University of Florida's tissue culture laboratory. Obviously, these are pothos plants, not Monsteras, but as disgraced YouTuber Cody Co once said, eh, that's close enough. I also put some variegated string of hearts into tissue culture recently. For my explants, I used both leaf samples and also tubers. I didn't get any contamination across the board for the leaf explants, but for the tubers, I did get some contamination. I knew at the time that I should have sterilized the tubers separately from the leaves since the tubers can handle a much higher concentration of bleach for a longer time. Oh, and these containers I don't normally use, but a company was moving out of another laboratory in this building and they gave me like so many containers <laughs> and also the flow hood that I've been using lately. My variegated Phalaenopsis orchids are also doing really well. The variegation is starting to show, which is fun. Orchids are typically grown from seed and those seeds are typically germinated aseptically in tissue culture. That's not what I did in this instance. I actually used nodal sections of the flower stalk for my tissue samples. I've never tried growing orchids from seed, but it is something that I would like to do someday. The last time that I tried to buy orchid seeds from a small seller, orchids basically just ran me off the internet. So, <laughs> so I've been looking for a seed pod to use. I won't linger on the succulents since we recently did an entire video on them, but the Echeveri Alawis are by far growing the fastest of anything that we started. Um, succulents also just look really cool in tissue cultures, so if you're looking for something easy to TC the first time, highly recommend um, like those types of succulents that have the really juicy leaves that you can just pull off the plant. The easiest experience I've ever had. I have been having a lot of condensation in my containers, so <laughs> I started sticking these mycology filter patches on my lids um, after drilling a hole with the drill through them. The hole doesn't need to be very big, it can be really, really small, but it does help a lot for gas exchange and not me realizing the lid's not even fully shut. Um, it helps with things like gas exchange and preventing hyperhidricity, which is an issue that has plagued some of my begonias in the past. These are my sensitive plants. I germinated these seeds on MS Media with activated charcoal, that's why the color is black. And I think they're really fun because the seedlings act just like adult plants, so if I touch them with sterile forceps, they kind of curl up and hide. Other than that, I have, I mean, a really hefty amount of rare begonias growing. I have um, callus in there that you can see for begonia U692. Also have a ton of Tamiyuk blues. Um, the only begonia that I have not been able to successfully tissue culture was begonia Darth Vaderiana. It just has such sensitive leaves, which makes it really hard to properly sterilize. My Darth Vaderiana died, unfortunately, rest in peace, so I cannot repeat the experiment, but I'll probably buy a new one at some point to try it and see if we can get it to work. I do keep pretty much my entire begonia collection in my laboratory in a tub, which is unadvisable. I would not recommend doing that. I would really like to redo this terrarium at some point in a more aesthetic way. I also think because there's no drainage of the bottom of 
the container and most of the roots have grown down out of the pot and now are kind of in the perlite that's at the base of my terrarium. I predict the plants are going to start having issues with nutrient uptake because of the amount of salts that are probably sitting at the bottom in that perlite. I do have the philodendron red anderson that's variegated from a video where I used a still air box to do the transfer. So in case you're curious, yes it is still going strong even though I used a still air box instead of the flow hood. Still air boxes are definitely more challenging than a flow hood to work with, but it is possible and this is proof. This took a really long time and I think I'm on my third subculture at this point, but there are some tiny little baby plants starting to form around the node, which is ultimately what we wanted. It just took weirdly longer than usual for it to happen. Now we're going to go put our Monstera aurea nodes and the Pseudolithos into tissue culture. So first thing first, I'm going to wash our eggplants in just some soapy water. And you don't need a lot of dish soap, just a drop, but you can also use tween 20 instead of dish soap if you want to. Like even the amount I just put in is probably <laughs> too much. And just to make it easier, I'm going to cut off the roots before we even really start. Oh my god. These lids suck. So it's kind of loud because the flow hood is on, but now I'm just going to take our explants and put them into the bleach solution. This one is 10%, this one is 20%, so the pseudolithos will be going in the 20%. Tip it upside down to get that bleach all over. Okay, sorry, the camera is super crooked, <laughs> but I want to show you. Um, so these have been in the bleach now for about 20 minutes. I'm gonna let them go a few more minutes, but you can kind of see like when they're almost ready to be rinsed, you can see the ends are very, very white. And that's a good way to tell when your explants are actually ready to be rinsed and sterile enough to go into tissue culture. So here I am rinsing the nodes of the Monstera with sterile autoclaved water. I'm going to rinse them three times and then I'll do the same exact thing for the pseudolithos momentarily. You could also, instead of using autoclaved water, just go to a grocery store and buy a jug of distilled water. As long as it hasn't been opened and it's sealed, it should be sterile enough to use for TC. Once those plants are rinsed, I just leave them in some water until I'm ready to actually deal with them and put them into the TC media. In case you are curious, the hot tool that I am using in this video is called a Bacti Zapper. It's an alternative to a glass bead sterilizer or a less expensive alcohol lamp. And <laughs> basically what I'm doing here is I'm cutting off five millimeters or so of each end of the node to get rid of that dead tissue that has been in contact with the bleach. My hands are always in the way. I see the comments. I know my hands are in the way all the time. I need to get one of those little harnesses you can mount your camera on so you can see both of your arms. I think my brother has one because he used to film home brewing videos on a channel called Mr. Yeast, which is such a good channel name. I think he gave it to a friend. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be improving the angles here okay i didn't film the pseudolithos but 
I didn't do anything to it. I just took it out of that water and plopped it straight into this media. Wow, that zoom in and zoom out is cursed. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, so there it is in the media. Back to present day lore. Now that I'm done, I'm just wrapping everything with plastic wrap to make sure that we have a really good seal. After I finish wrapping these up, I'm gonna go home, eat dinner, and then we are going to set up for my live stream tonight. I am live streaming on Instagram, which I've never done before. I've never been on live yeah. television before. Um, we're gonna do like a dual live stream, myself and Microdex Mushrooms. And he is helping me take my liquid lion's mane mushroom culture and put it on grain. And I hope I'm using the right words because I'm really new to mushrooms. Two hours later. I'm all set up for my live stream. The setup looks great. Wow! I think we have 30 minutes before it starts. Do you guys want to see my isopods? These are my isopods. Um, the original one I had was named Petrie. He's a rubber ducky isopod. He did seem really lonely, so I got him five roommates. These guys in here are cousins of the deep sea isopods, which I read can grow up to 2.5 feet in length. I think that's like that big. The Florida Keys Aquarium has a touch tank where you can really get your freak on and touch a deep sea isopod. I was disappointed to learn this because I was in the Florida Keys about a month ago and I walked right past the Florida Keys Aquarium without a thought, and little did I know the giant isopods were in there waiting for me. But guess who is going on a Florida Keys cruise later this year? Me, bitch! I'm gonna touch a deep sea isopod. Anyway, I'm gonna go pace around a little bit until my live stream starts. Hold on, one at a time. 